University at Camp Randall Stadium. The Senator Jim Trestle opening kickoff to David Gilreath of the Badgers. Seam, see ya. Only one safety man. They never made him veer right or left. Didn't have to break stride. Goes all the way. To that was the first touch for Wisconsin on their first drive, big John Clay. That big, powerful offensive line does a terrific job of creating the scene for John Clay. And the 240-pounder storms in the end zone, 14 yards for the score. First 100-yard rusher, the Buckeyes had allowed in 30 games. Terrell Pryor sacked by J.J. Watt. Trestle and the Buckeyes looking at the play chart, hoping something would work. Dan Heron in the Wildcat down 21-3. Boom, in 21-10. Here come the Buckeyes, and TP's rallying the troops. Third quarter, third down, Pryor looking for Dane Sonsenbacher. Oh, this is a tremendous catch. Watch him go up oh. and get that ball on third down for a critical first down. Keep the drive alive. Same drive, fourth quarter now, boom. Heron's in there, two-point conversion, and the Buckeyes have come all the way back, only down three, but on the ensuing drive. Scott Tolzien to Nick Toon, just like his dad did it. Son of Al Toon making the grab, and then James White, the freshman, made it. Oh, what nifty feet on this run. Great blocking on the left side again, but a terrific job by James White with the vision and the feet and the speed taking him for the score. Bucky celebrating. Number one goes down 31-18. Yep, yep, going up to Kentucky. Got Marcus Lattimore. You know, I never lost Kentucky 17-0. Lattimore, the freshman was sensational. Cocky came out ready to go. 7-0 Gamecocks. Steven Garcia to Lattimore on the wheel. Oh, just right down the side. And this is the thing about Lattimore, even though he's a freshman, he was a good pass receiver in high school as well as a running back. In the third quarter, here's a play that really sort of seemed to take some air out of South Carolina. Lattimore goes down with a sprained ankle. But, you know, I mean, it's 28-10. Mm -hmm. Spurrier 17-0 against Kentucky. They've got a really good defense, but... Cats get a touchdown. It's 28-17. Randall Cobb into Wildcat. Oh, terrific job by Randall Cobb here, showing the determination to pick up the extra yardage for the first down for Kentucky. And on the next play, Mike Hartline sends out Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews playing a little hard ball into the end zone. 38 yards. Cats missed the two-point conversion. Still down five. Fourth quarter, fourth and seven. This is the last chance. Hartline. Touchdown. Randall Cobb, two-point conversion's good. 31-28, but Gamecocks have another chance. 15 seconds to go. Garcia, Tory Gurley, out of bounds. They're in field goal range now. They need it to tie. Spencer Landing's over there. He's ready to go. But you've got one shot at the end zone. The one thing you don't want to do is throw an interception. Ugh. Anthony Mosley with the pick. 31-28, Kentucky wins it over South Carolina. The Big 12 title game last year, Bo Pelini's team all jacked up, but it was Garrett Gilbert running the football early, Lou. Well, he caught Nebraska by surprise. Nebraska defense was great, but Garrett goes in untouched. You know, Nebraska really had some problems. Taylor Martinez was only 4 of 12, but Rex Burkhead should have caught that one for a touchdown. Eventually, Martinez came out in favor of the senior, Zach Lee. Gilbert, meanwhile, didn't have a great day passing. Finds Fozzie Whitaker. Oh, Fozzie, who's trying to take over that running back spot, goes for 41. Here goes Gilbert on the ground. Nice push by the offensive line. When you get in that situation, just knock him back, get lower than the defender, and that's exactly what they did. Zach Lee on a fourth and 18, just going to heave it. And he puts it right on Brandon Kenny, who drops it. Who drops it. Would have been a touchdown. Nebraska scored one late. Couldn't get it back in the eye. Mallet and Arkansas. Newton has his damage with his arm and his feet. Brian Mallet's got that big arm, but he didn't get to show it off for long. Nick Fairley grabs him by the shoulder pad, spikes him. Mallet stayed in for a while, but eventually left the game. Didn't return after sustaining a concussion. Tyler Wilson. Very capable backup that Bob Petrino's very high on would replace him. We'll see why later. Here's a key play in this game. Mario Fannin goes in to the end zone, but the ball doesn't go with him. Now, two officials on the field. One ruled fumble, the other ruled touchdown. They got together, decided the guy who said touchdown had the better view. Went upstairs, know the ball came straight down. Break went Auburn's way. Touchdown ruled. 37-35, Auburn had the lead. 
Childs, please. Wilson to Greg Childs. Arkansas on top, 43-37, but Newton had an answer mark. Nice touch by the big fella. A little play action here. He steps up, has great protection, floats the ball right across the middle. Emery Blake, touchdown, Auburn. Auburn regains the lead. He's suing Hogg's possession. Broderick Green gets a first down. Hogg's on the move. But, Lou, Auburn's defense much maligned, but they come up with an opportunistic play. Well, this was critical because at that time the score was 44-43 in the middle of the fourth quarter. They reviewed this play as well. See if Green's knee was down. It appears hard to see, but it appears he was on top of a defender. That would mean live ball. Zach Etheridge cashed it in. You thought he was down, Lou? I thought he was definitely down, Coach. All right, well, two things going Auburn's way, and then Auburn made a break. No dispute about this. Josh Bynes with the pick. The fine linebacker for the Tigers gets him right on the doorstep. And you know what happens when they get on the doorstep. Mm -hmm. Cam Newton. He likes the end zone. He jumps in. 188 yards rushing, three rushing touchdowns. Yeah, that's not a type of graph. Alabama trying to bounce back after losing to South Carolina. Julio Jones had surgery on his hand. Thought he might be out until the bye week in November. Caught a pass early, but then that one bounced out. Didn't return to the game. He iced up the hand. Looking at the one he had surgery on. Marquise Mays returning the punt. I want you to watch Alex Watkins right here. 91. He's got somebody in his sights, Mark. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Took out a couple of them. That's how Alex Watkins will put his face in the fan, won't he, Lou? Oh, I tell you right now. That's why, that's why you look out your ear hole for a block like that. <laughs> there, there, was, there was a yard sale going on with <laughs> helmet equipment after Alex delivered that hit. Little screen pass to Trent Richardson. He'd take care of that. It'll be an 85-yard touchdown pass on McElroy's stat sheet. Richardson getting the job done. 23 to 10, wasn't pretty. Alabama's won 18 in a row at home. But you know who would take an ugly win like Alabama or LSU had right now? Who? The Gators. Florida against Mississippi State. And Urban Meyer's longtime assistant, Dan Mullen, Amarius Hines. Down 10 0. He goes in. It's late in the third quarter. It's 10 7. Still in the third. Now in the fourth, Hines, 23-yard line. He'll go picking up 31. Gators got a chance to take the lead. John Brantley to Jeff Demps, and Louie puts it on the turf. Oh, he does, and there, this is just something that Florida has not done the last couple of years. They've always protected the football, not lately. Mississippi State had to punt it. Brantley trying to get his team at least in field goal range to tie it, put it into overtime. Fourth and two, it's converted. Henry's going to come on to try to win the game. Now, remember, Henry's a punter by trade. He's only place kicking because the regular place kicker's injured, and he missed from 42, and Mullen gets a huge signature victory, 10-7 over Florida. State ranked. UW sort of alternated wins and losses most of the time this year, and they went to overtime in Seattle, first overtime. Brian Cast, Quiz Rogers. Oh, the best player on their offense. Quiz Rogers does a great job of fighting into the end zone for the score. 28 unanswered points after Washington had jumped on top of Jake Locker. Jermaine Curse ties the game. We would go to a second overtime. Locker 21 and 35, 286 and five touchdowns, including this one to Curse. Uh, just a great throw, another great catch. And boy, it looks like Washington's in business. Last chance, fourth and one for Mike Riley's team. Ryan Katz, incomplete Washington wins, but wait, no. Pass interference, give it to Quiz. Beavers in the house, down one. Now, you don't have to go for two until the third overtime, but Mike Riley's ready to spin that wheel of fortune, and the destiny of Boise State and TCU could have slipped through the hands of Joe Alahuni. Alahuni's a fine tight end. There was traffic in front, and he just couldn't hold on. And Steve Sarkeesian game against the Aggies. Blaine Gibbert, a, Gabbert, a bit of a hip pointer, and Blaine Gabbert hits Wes Kemp. Extra point was blocked, but really, as we put this on axis, some fine blocking here. Uh, fine blocking, but they pulled the right guard and the right tackle to look like a counter play. The quarterback had the option to hand off on the run or throw the hitch pass out here, but he gets great blocking. Notice he says it's two on two. That's why he threw it out there. Now, Kemp had 10 catches, 89 yards, couple of touchdowns, and Gabbert would find him in the third mark. Guys up front do a terrific job, but what a laser pass right here on the slant pin to take it into the score. Later in the third, the Aggies coming apart at the seams. One of the heat's going to be on Mike Sherman. Gabbert, P.J. Moe. Hey, Moe! 
spread out. Oh, wise guy. Missouri commanding 30 to three lead. Gerard Johnson, the stats look good at the end with this great catch by Jeff Fuller, an acrobatic play, but the stats don't matter when you can't get it in the end zone and Missouri put up big numbers and scored a lot. But Missouri's defense been outstanding under Dave Stecker this year. No question, Missouri remains undefeated. Mike Gundy's Oklahoma State Cowboys also undefeated on the road to take on Texas Tech. They're a spread team, but Kendall Hunter makes them different, Lou. He, he does, and he goes in there. And remember, Oklahoma State had not won in Lubbock since 1944. Well, that's going to change. Jeremy Smith goes in, pokes up 21-0. Tuberville's team rallied, but then Brandon Whedon, the former baseball player, to Justin Blackman, he's just having a sensational year. Sensational year and a sensational day, but here he takes a reception. He's going to make sure he gets it into the end zone. What a terrific job to finish the play. Blackman, a candidate for a helmet. Taking on the fighting Zookers, Mark D'Antonio on the field pregame. He would go up to the coach's box during the game. Sparty driving. Look, it's the third quarter. They didn't have a touchdown, Mark, until Kirk Cousins finds B.J. Cunningham, 48 yards. You take another look here. Illinois appears to be playing some zone defense, and, and they freeze the guys. Oh, you got him. No, you got him. Terrific job by Michigan Whoops. State of running the pattern right here. Wide open, blown coverage by Illinois. Sparty up 13 to 6. Illinois down 19 to 6 when Nathan Shieldhouse threw three picks on the day. Trent Robinson, he'll take that when Spartans forced four turnovers in all. This was a good, solid win for Michigan State coming off the victory over Michigan, winning by 20. Oklahoma, of course, hoping Florida State keeps winning, keep pumping up that computer number. Rankings going up and their BCS numbers look good. That's not helping. Christian Ponder picked off by Donnie Fletcher. Second interception of the game. There was a flag on the play. Offside BC, the touchdown brought back. Offside. Yes, Defense. offside. Defense. Five yards. Check out this play by Mark Herslick going high and getting the tip. Jim Noel. Pick six. What a great play by Herslick, Mayday. Oh, terrific athletes. Good to see him back at 100%. But he's got some great hops here. Tips the ball. Interception. Pick six. Boston College. BC cuts it to 17 16. Under two minutes in the third. Ponder puts it on the deck. Fourth turnover forced by the Eagles. Boston College takes a lead on a field goal, but in the fourth quarter, key play of the game. Let's put it on ESPN Axis. Watches here, Lou. Reverse. Reverse. Burt Reed, watch the blocking he gets. Let's see how the formulation of the fundamentals of the good base in there and the angle. Watch how he sets it up right there and then breaks it up inside. Use his speed. This is going to press me at Buffalo to State. The effort they're getting from everybody on that team. 24-19, so Oklahoma pleased with the result. Florida State follows up its win over Miami. Just get it done. Virginia Tech lost those first two to Boise and James Madison, and suddenly the Hokies are finding their rhythm against Wake, Tyrod Taylor, Logan Thomas. Only used one hand, got six points. Virginia Tech up 7-0. Taylor now finds Danny Cole. Biden this time, Biden this time. Tyrod Taylor has great feet here. Oh. Spin, he's going to run back across the field again, but he's going to throw it. 25 yards, Danny Cole's going to take it in for the score. Okie, hokey, hokey, high, Tech Tech VPI. Tyrod Jarrett Boykin backing up, throwing it into the end zone, showing the arm strength. At 49 by halftime, 52 21 the final. The Hokies have won five in a row, looking like a force in the ACC. Miami just went into Wallace Wade Stadium, expected to roll their hats out there and defeat Duke. Have a look at my Connor Regis. Drops into coverage. Oh, oh, the big fella making the play. Miami intercepted five passes, forced two fumbles, and yet still only put 28 on the board. Hurricanes do get the victory, though. He registered eight on the rector scale when he fell. <laughs> Denard Robinson having to deal with one of the best rush defenses in the country. Michigan was down 21-7 when Robinson would go on a short run and then comes down on the shoulder, Mark. Oh, physical defense by the Iowa Hawkeyes, but it's the toll of all the hits throughout the entire season for Denard Robinson. He's only 180 pounds. Robinson would be replaced by Tate Forcia. Iowa up by two touchdowns. Ricky Stanzi and Darrell Johnson Cooliano's got together three times for touches. Now they give the slant, the inside move there, and the easy completion. But Forcier asks not for whom the ball is thrown. The ball is thrown for the Hemingway. 
They force the A to Junior Hemingway, 35-21. After three and out, force the A, scrambles. Hey, look at this. Michigan within a touchdown. But Iowa drives down. Got a field goal, and now Forcier needs two scores, and he needs them quickly. No time for dump offs. He's picked off. I guess you can call that Forciering a ball into coverage. Roy Johnson with the pick. Purdue. Tim Brewster under a lot of fire. Some expectations that maybe they could improve a little bit. Minnesota won the opening game against Middle Tennessee, hasn't won since. Rob Henry of Purdue picked off by Gary Tinsley. Oh, that's one of those, that's why you're Minnesota moments. Ruling is a touchback. Purdue gets the ball back. It hit the pylon. So, I mean, another inch, just an inch shorter for Tim Brewster. Henry and Tavia Edison. Purdue would win it by a count of 28 to 17. Multiple reports saying that Brewster will not return next season, but will coach. Team Nevada. Undefeated, taking the trip to Honolulu to face Hawaii. Wolfpack 0-5 at Aloha Stadium since 2000. Under three and a half to go, fourth quarter. Down by 13, Colin Kaepernick to Mike Ball. They're in business, Nevada now down by six on the kickoff. Perfect onside kick by Ricky Drake, recovered by the Wolfpack. So they're in business, down six and driving. Kaepernick across the middle. Trouble here, gets deflected, Montesilva is there. Game over. Hawaii with the upset, 27-21. Tough loss for Nevada, tough loss for Boise State. The Broncos face the Wolfpack in late November. Strength of schedule is big, and it's a big blow now for Boise State. With much more, let's go to Reese Davis.